What is going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. I am Chad, the reseller Rockefeller, and uh, today is actually May the 17th. We're going to be talking about a few different things on this video, uh, seeing that it's been a while since I've made a video and you know, I haven't been uploading any videos. I want to apologize to all of my subscribers. Uh, I have had a ton of stuff going on. Uh, we have been going through so much. Uh, you know, as you know, if you follow my channel, uh, then you know that I already, you know, I moved into my new home and we've been just working really hard on getting things set up. I've been working really hard on getting the warehouse uh, set up and trying to get everything, you know, where it needs to be and it's been a bigger job than I ever expected. I'm making a lot of changes, you know, within my business. I'm getting rid of a lot of stuff and I'm starting to, you know, focus on higher end items. So I've been focusing on liquidating all of my lower end items. So I've just been dealing with a lot and haven't had any time to uh, make any videos. So I wanted to do a quick, you know, channel update, kind of get everybody uh, in tune with what's going on around the home front and at the homestead. That's what we call it around here. Uh, we decided to call it the homestead because it's our homestead. This is where we live and we're going to start uh, breeding a few animals. We're going to get some goats. We're going to get some chickens. Uh, you know, I've really enjoyed it uh, moving out here to the country. It really does feel like home. I have my own property. I have my warehouse and I have a ton of acres to, you know, ride around on the four wheelers and have a good time. So I really enjoy it. Uh, other than that, I also want to talk about something else. Uh, I'm going to be doing a review video coming up soon. I was, uh, you know, I was contacted by bluelots.com and uh, I'm going to be doing a review on a, a box lot of items. So not really sure what they're going to send me yet, but I'm pretty anxious to do a review on this company because I already was thinking about buying some stuff from them. So this is going to give me a perfect opportunity to kind of experience what they have to offer uh, and uh, give my honest opinion about it. So I'm going to be doing a video uh, on Blue Lots very soon, so be on the lookout for that. It's going to be a little bit different than your average review video because my videos are just a little bit different in general. But uh, yeah, other than that, you know, things have been going pretty darn good. I just uh, won a really big case on PayPal that I'm extremely excited about. I'm not really going... I'm not going to go into depth about it, but uh, I had a case opened up on PayPal against me, uh, an item not as described case, and uh, the buyer was simply just trying to scam me. Uh, the item that I sold was actually an a personal item of mine that I purchased brand new from the store and he tried to tell me that the item had been reported stolen. I explained to PayPal that I could, you know, I could prove that I purchased the item brand new from the store. He said that he was going to produce a police report and then PayPal pretty much said that if he produces a police report stating that the item uh, is reported stolen, that they were going to side with him. And I was going to lose a lot of money. This item sold for a little over $3,000. So I was pretty, uh, you know, bubble guts. And I thought for sure that, man, you know, I'm going to win this case, even though I know I'm in the right. And uh, this guy's looking to scam me. Uh, long story short, I ended up doing a ton of investigation work. Uh, I even contacted the business that he said he works for I even looked up on the Better Business Bureau and seen that they had tons of negative uh, feedback and they had tons of complaints uh, for doing all kinds of stuff. So I'm super happy that, you know, PayPal closed that case in my favor and, uh, you know, gave me all my money back and all that good stuff. So I'm super stoked about that. Uh, like I said, I'm stoked about, uh, you know, doing a review video soon and I'm stoked to kind of you know, be back to YouTube. Uh, I know I said that before in my last video, but you know, it was much harder getting settled into the house than I expected. But uh, I'm also going to be doing a uh, tour video of the warehouse. So if you're interested in seeing what my warehouse looks like, it looks a lot like my old warehouse, but there are a few changes. And personally, I like it a little better. It's not as big. I don't have as much space but it feels more homey, it feels more comfortable, and it's only gonna get better. Uh, I'm gonna start adding a lot of artwork on the walls, I'm gonna start putting up all of my posters, 
I don't know if I ever mentioned this in any of my older videos, but I've been a huge collector of uh, vintage posters for about, uh, I would say about 13 years. And over the years, I've accumulated so many posters, uh, but I've never really had a location where I could put them out, you know, and put them on display. So I'm actually going to use the warehouse and I'm just going to put posters all over the place. I got some really cool uh, unique vintage posters. I also got some really extremely rare posters, so I can't wait to show all of that to you guys. Uh, I'm probably going to be doing a review on uh, Blue Lots, hopefully tomorrow, and then maybe maybe uh, the next day, maybe this weekend, Saturday or Sunday, I will do a short tour video of the actual warehouse uh, and then you know we're gonna start doing some uh, regular uploads on a regular basis but uh, yeah that's uh, you know a brief summary of what's been going on other than that folks I did want to mention uh, I didn't want to leave y'all hanging without any good information about reselling so I decided to whip together a quick list of seven items that you should be on the lookout for now this is a, uh, a list of unique items items that you might not be thinking about uh, maybe you already know about these items maybe you uh, you know you're already intelligent enough to understand that these items are worth something and uh, if that's the case then great I'm super happy that you already know that these items are you know out there and that you should be looking for them if not this is who you know I'm hoping to you know get in contact with is somebody watching this video that doesn't you know know that these items are worth money or maybe they just never figured they you know, were worth money and so that this little list will actually help somebody out there uh, and hopefully you'll run into these items out there at yard sales or thrift stores and you can make some money off of them. So I'm just gonna go ahead and read off this list. This is uh, my list of seven unique items that you should be on the lookout for. I'm gonna start off with number one, which is a pretty, pretty basic item that most people already know about, but for all of you that don't know about it, you know, be on the lookout for vintage Christmas ornaments and decorations. So, I, you know, over the years, I've bought and sold so many vintage Christmas ornaments, antique ornaments. You know, there's so many out there. Uh, you know, people love to buy this kinds of stuff. Uh, there's tons of collectors, and there's also people that just wanna reenact their childhood or maybe their theme for Christmas is 70s or 80s. So they go on the internet and they're looking to buy vintage ornaments. So if you see those out there, purchase them, do some research, try to figure out what people are actually buying, what people are not buying. Uh, there's certain items that are you know, vintage decorations that, that are just not that popular. So make sure you do your research, but for the most part, keep your eyes out for vintage Christmas decorations and ornaments. That's number one on the list. Number two, old glass perfume bottles. Now, this is a tricky one because there are a bunch out on the market that, that are not really worth that much money, but you know there are tons of them that are definitely worth grabbing if you can find them at the right price. I just recently sold one for a little over 200 bucks. Uh, that was probably a month or two ago, but yeah, I mean, keep your eyes out for vintage perfume bottles. Uh, they come in all different shapes and sizes. They all have little pumps on them. Some of them won't have pumps. Uh, you know, they, they really are an item that, you know, women collect. I even know some men that collect them. Uh, they're really you know, an all around good collector's item. So people are willing to pay up for them, especially for the really hard, uh, you know, hard ones to find, the rare ones, the really unique ones. Uh, you can definitely get some serious money for it. So let's move on to number three, vintage football programs. Now, this is something that a lot of people hold on to. Collectors, you know, usually don't really get rid of this kind of stuff because usually if people are collecting football memorabilia or sp sports memorabilia, uh, they'll, they will have some, uh, you know, some football programs, which are, you know, little pamphlets. Sometimes they're like, they look like little microscopic little brochures and it'll have like the football schedules of certain teams. And, uh, you can find these at yard sales, estate sales. You can find them at thrift stores sometimes. And for the most part, you're going to get lucky with an item like this. You know, uh, most of the time when I find these items, 
it's just luck. I'm out at a yard sale and I pick up a box that has some baseball cards and some other miscellaneous in it and I end up buying the whole box. And uh, later on, you know, after going through it, I end up finding, you know, an old football program or maybe a couple of old football programs. Obviously, the older they are, the more money they're going to be worth and the condition of them and, you know, all that good stuff. What team is on them? You know, there's a bunch of variables, but, you know, for the most part, keep your eyes out for those. Uh, number four, which this is something that, you know, I don't even know why I added to the list because most resellers should already know about. But for some reason, if you don't know about this, be on the lookout for vintage luggage. People are using vintage luggage uh, more than ever for decoration items, you know, just regular home decor. Uh, there are a ton of people out there that are repurposing them you know, making them coffee tables, end tables, uh, all kinds of stuff, man. I see so much stuff out there being done with vintage luggage. So if you're out at yard sales, estate sales, thrift stores, flea markets, whatever, and you come across vintage luggage, definitely pick it up if you can get it at the right price. Also, pay attention to the luggage. Uh, the name brand of the luggage really makes a big difference. The condition makes a big difference. And also, the ones that have tons of like stickers on them, the ones that uh, where people traveled all over the country and every time you go to an airport or to a different city or state or town or country, you would get like a sticker placed on it. Uh, sometimes the stickers will have stamps on it. Uh, those are really sought after because it just adds that, you know, that shock, you know, that wow value to it. People love those stickers. People love to see, you know, Paris, London, New Zealand, New Mexico, Mexico, you know, Florida, wherever they visited. It just, uh, it's something that appeals to the, to the people that actually are looking for that stuff. So make sure you're on the lookout for vintage luggage. Also, number five, old cast iron mailboxes. So if you're a reseller, you probably already know, you know, cast iron is really hot. It's really popular. Uh, you know, people are looking for cast iron pots, pans, pretty much anything made out of cast iron. If it's old and it's cast iron, it's probably worth money. But one thing that I just recently picked up just a couple of weeks ago was a box. Uh, it probably had four or five uh, small little cast iron mailboxes. Uh, some of them have the little lid that open and closes. Some of them are just slot, you know, solid with a little slit in it. Uh, these little cast iron mailboxes sometimes will be really ornate and they'll have little designs and stuff on them. Uh, sometimes they'll have people's names on them, numbers, whatever the case may be. Sometimes they'll be, you know, painted, non-painted. Sometimes they'll have floral patterns. You know, if you see a cast iron mailbox, first off, do some research. Make sure you're not buying a reproduction because these are definitely on the market and uh, some of them are old and some of them are reproduction. So make sure you know how to tell the difference. A good tip with cast iron items, especially like little cast iron toys and things, look for the grind marks. Uh, if you can look on the bottom of these items and you can see grind marks where it looks like a machine has ground it down or maybe a, a grinder wheel you know, shaved the bottom of it, most likely that's a reproduction. Uh, that's just not how they were made back then. So uh, be, make sure, you know, you get up to date on, you know, determining if it's real or fake. Uh, so that was number five. Let's move on to number six, antique weather vanes. So these are uh, obviously weather vanes. They go on the top of barns, houses, old buildings and structures. Some of these can be cast iron. Some of them, be, some of them can be cast aluminum. Some of them can be aluminum, uh, steel. I've pretty much seen them in pretty much every metal. Uh, they, you know, they come in all different shapes and sizes. They come in different, you know, chickens, turkeys, roosters, uh, automobiles. You know, you name it. They, you know, you can find them. They are definitely something to be on the lookout for. Antique weather vanes are really hot and popping right now. People are buying them. They've, they've really been, you know, really hot on the market. Uh, the real ones are definitely hard to find. There's a lot of reproduction out there on the market so again make sure you know what you're looking at make sure you know you're actually buying an antique uh, you know and you can definitely make some money so that was number six let's move on to number seven and this is the last one on the list milk glass Easter eggs so if you deal in glass pottery stuff like that then you already know what milk glass is uh, that's that really 
white. I don't know if I have a piece of milk glass in here. I know I have milk glass out in the warehouse, but you know, it's pretty much glass that's the color of milk. It's white. Really easy to identify. There's tons of stuff out there that's, you know, made out of milk glass, but for the most part, you know, milk glass has had its peak. And uh, right now, you know, most milk glass stuff is just not really worth a lot. There are some items still out there that people are collecting. Uh, but for the most part, I've been focusing on, you know, hunting down the Easter eggs. And these will be, you know, obviously in the shape of eggs. They'll usually be really small. They'll be milk glass. That's what they're made out of. And then they come usually blank. But what happens is people will paint them. They'll put little designs, figures, different colors, flowers, you know, whatever the case may be. So they're hand painted usually. And uh, they can bring really good money depending on age, depending on uh, everything. The paint that's on it, the condition, the design, the size, the shape. They can range in price, uh, you know, from, you know, $20, $30 all the way up to $100, $175, $200. So be on the lookout for those. That is the last thing on my list. So I hope that was something of value. I didn't just want to come up here and, uh, you know, come on here and make a video tonight without giving some sort of value to my viewers. Uh, other than that, folks, I really don't have much else to talk about. Uh, business is going really good. Uh, we had a, a huge slowdown for a while because of the move and the fact that I just wasn't active on eBay. I wasn't active on Amazon. So my sales kind of, you know, took a dive. But for the most part, it, you know, it wasn't that bad. Um, and the main reason it wasn't that bad is because I was really busy doing other stuff. So I didn't really mind uh, not having to pack and ship tons of orders each day. I think the worst it got was down to like four or five items a day. So, you know, my business, I usually average at about uh, anywhere from like nine to 10 items up to about 15 to 20, sometimes like 21, 22, 23. That's usually right where I'm at is about 10 to 15 items a day. Uh, but you got to understand that, you know, I usually sell items in the 40 to $75 price range. So it's not too bad. Uh, but my sales did drop for a while. But I'm just now, you know, I'm getting back into the swing of things. I'm finally listing items every day. I finally got my photo booth set up uh, out in the warehouse. So I no longer have to use this photo booth, which is just a really small photo booth that I kind of whipped together with some poster board uh, just so I could photograph some small items and get some items listed. Mainly, I focused on listing some jewelry and stuff uh, during you know that time period where I wasn't really listing any item, but now I have my photo booth set up and uh, it's actually really, really nice. I can't believe how good it turned out. It is probably the best photo booth that I have set up since I've been a reseller. Uh, the pictures are just coming out amazing and I will definitely show you guys uh, the photo setup when I do my uh, tour video of the warehouse, uh, probably this weekend. I'm almost definitely positive for sure I'm gonna do that video this weekend. Also, like I said, I'm gonna be doing the Blue Lots review. I'll probably do that tomorrow. So stay tuned, make sure you stick around and you watch those videos that will be coming up within the next couple of days. Other than that, folks, I really appreciate it. I can't believe that, you know, it's almost been, I think it's almost been a year since I've been on uh, YouTube, or maybe not quite yet. I'm going to have to look on my account and uh, see. Uh, but, you know, you know, I haven't really uploaded a lot of videos. Uh, I think I only have like 50 videos in total, so I really don't have a lot of content yet. I'm just now getting started, but it's got me super excited because, you know, the small little group of followers that I do have, uh, you know, I really appreciate you guys, all of you out there that follow my channel. It really does mean a lot. Uh, you know, I'm really trying to build my channel and hopefully I'll have that growth uh, that I need to, uh, you know, to actually make it on YouTube. So we'll see. Hopefully when I start producing more content, things will get better. But, you know, We'll see. We'll, we'll see what happens. Other than that, folks, I want to say thank you. I really appreciate it. Thanks a lot for stopping by and watching. I hope that the list of the seven unique items uh, helped somebody. If it did, please leave a thumbs up. If it didn't, you can still leave a thumbs up. Other than that, folks, I really appreciate it. Have a wonderful night. Peace.